Hello, welcome to week 21 of Eden Hope Academy. Get out your books, give them a wiggle, and let's get started. All right, Bible is though, oh, this is by Isaiah. Now remember last week we read some verses in Isaiah? So he wrote this and it's one of my very favorite songs. Um, I'll have to I'll have to put the name of the song because like my brain is not working right now. But um, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. That is a beautiful verse. Though your sins be red, like bright red, they will be as white as snow. Now, how is that? The Bible tells us that when we repent and when we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us to cover us, that even though our sins can make us like scarlet red, that he just washes us and that we are white as snow by just knowing that he died on the cross for us. It's amazing. And he did that for you, which is so cool because you are so special. Okay, so now what I want you to do is draw a person being miraculously clean. That should be miraculously, right? So put an L-Y in that. All right, the next one is history. So you can be drawing as we're doing history. And it says, therefore, this is what the Lord says concerning the king of Assyria. He will not enter this city. No, he won't. No, he won't. He will not shoot an arrow here. No, he won't. No, he won't. He will not come before it with a shield or build a siege ramp against it. By the way he came, he will return. He will not enter this city. No, he won't. No, he won't, declares the Lord. I will defend this city and save it for my sake and for the sake of David, my servant. Oh, so cool. So do you guys know this story? Because this is a great story. So you have Hezekiah and he's in Jerusalem and Hezekiah knows that the king of Assyria is going to come because he has been gobbling up all of the other nations on his way. And so he knows that this army is fierce and he knows that they make siege ramps and that they'll just go right over the walls with those. He knows that they are mean and tough. And so he is shaken in his boots. He is scared and he doesn't know what to do. And so, so um, what he does first was really wise. So the first thing he did was he built tunnels from far away and that way with the tunnels, he would get water into Jerusalem. So that was very, very wise. And what he did was he set one tunnel crew this way and one tunnel crew this way and they drilled and drilled and drilled until guess what happened? They missed each other. And so they had to drill this way until the tunnels touched each other. And so if you go to Israel today, there's actually that point where they missed and it, it's inscribed in the tunnel that they missed or they, that they could hear each other, but they had just missed each other and they had to break through the tunnel wall. So I think that's really cool. So they were able to get water during the siege, but the people were starving and Hezekiah was very scared. And what was happening was that um, Sennacherib's army, his generals were going up and down, or his people were going up and down shouting in um, Aramaic or in Hebrew to the people and saying that all of the gods of the other cities were not able to help them. So they should not depend on their God to help them and to rescue them. Now we know that they're talking about a very different thing between the one true God of the universe and these little city small g ODs. And so um, Isaiah came to Hezekiah and he said these words to him. Now we made it into a rap so they didn't repeat, but he says, this is what the Lord says. This guy is not gonna enter the city. Now, the way it was looking to Hezekiah at the time, this guy was, Snickerab was going to enter that city, and he was going to enter it soon. But Isaiah said, no, God has not said this. God has said he's not going to enter it. And do you know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. That night, or right after that, everyone went to sleep, and they thought, we're not going to make it the next morning. This is really bad. You know, they're going to attack us. And that night... All of the troops disappeared. All of the Assyrian troops disappeared and they left all of their food and their equipment and their tents and everything right there. They just left. And so God just cleared the area 
And that's something that is really cool and can happen in your life. There can be problems that you think this is just insurmountable. And sometimes God allows us to go through time so that, or to trials so that we can learn and that we can be short of. But He is always there with us and there is always a possibility that He will just clear the field. That He will just be there. That he, he is always there. But that He will do something miraculous. So never, 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 never think God isn't going to do something miraculous. Okay, so draw Hezekiah's expression upon hearing these words. Do you think he was like, I'm so relieved, or do you think he was like, what? What do you think his expression was? Or do you think he was like, thank you, Jesus, thank you, God, or something like that? What do you think his expression was? So I want you to write that right here. All right, Hezekiah was scared, and the people, this is in Lincoln, so Lincoln, Lincoln. Hezekiah was scared, and the people of Jerusalem were starving and losing faith. What did, Hezekiah, what did Isaiah say to Hezekiah? So it's the therefore, so he said words of, encouragement to him. He said what God had told him to say. And remember with Amos, God doesn't always tell his prophets to say things that are encouraging. Sometimes it's encouragement by saying that you're not doing the right thing. But this time it was encouraging by saying that you're going to be okay. Okay, what, why did Hezekiah believe Isaiah? Why do you think? Talk to your mom about that. Do you think it could have been because of Isaiah's reputation? Did you read some of Isaiah's work about how close he was to God? Perhaps it was his reputation or um, of the things that he spoke, something like that. So think about that and talk to your mama. And then um, who went out into the camp? Oh, that was a part of the story I didn't tell you. People with a skin disease called leprosy were kept on the outside of the walls of Jerusalem. They weren't allowed in because they were afraid it would spread. And the people of Jerusalem were like, Ew! stay away from me. You had to call out if you had leprosy so everyone could stay away from you because people were afraid that it would spread. And so it was actually the lepers who went out was the least of those who went out and saw all of the tents and the food and everything like that. And they were the ones that told the people. A lot of times it's those people who we dismiss in life. We think, oh, they, they can't do that. Or, you know, maybe they have a, a problem or something like that. And we dismiss them. And a lot of times God uses those people. So always remember that everyone is loved and valued by God. Everyone. Okay, so now we have science. So switch the page. We have a battling ram. I thought this was interesting because it's actually a, an Assyrian battling ram. And so check this puppy out. This is, this is carved into a wall, into a stone wall. And this would have been terrifying to see that coming towards your wall. It's like a modern day tank. The Assyrians used battling rams to break through the thick stone walls of the people whom they conquered. So they would actually use this to break right through their stone walls. So draw a battling ram. Okay, and next, Babylon and Assyria were under. So it was up here. And then do you see how much Sennacherib increased the Assyrian Empire? All of that except Judea right here, which God kept safe. So that was a huge huge empire. You can see where they just gobbled up city-states as they went. So I want you to draw the Tigris and the Euphrates River and at the north, maybe color, maybe maybe kind of replicate a little bit of this map and write the Mediterranean, the Mediterranean Sea and go all the way down. Here's the Nile River and maybe just do a big green blob and then just do a, like a dot right there. So like maybe do the Mediterranean Sea and the Tigris and the Euphrates and then lots of green and just a little bit of red for, for God protecting um, Judah right there. All right, so I will see you. Oh, let's, I keep forgetting to do your cards. Okay, so we've got three cards this week, so you'll do all three. The first one is Hezekiah and Sennacherib, so we've talked about that. What could you draw on your card? You could draw a battling ram. You could draw that tunnel, not touching. You could draw people going, oh, I'm really hungry. You could draw people with, with skin problems finding the, that they had been saved, that the people, the, um, the invaders had left. You could draw lots of things on that card. And so for um, critical thinking class, for leadership class, I want you to think about um, 
I want you to think about Sennacherib and how he, he really thought he was just gonna bulldoze on through there and what he must have thought when he wasn't able to. And I want you to think about Hezekiah and how he was trying to follow God and um, he built that tunnel and then he listened to Isaiah. And I want you to think about what they, the people were probably feeling at the time, especially when Sennacherib was yelling out, or his people were yelling out that God wouldn't save them. Think about that. They probably were really scared and it probably didn't seem like God was gonna save them. So think about that as well. All right, the next one is the end of the Assyrian Empire. So even that empire ended. So I want you to think about how it ended and what the causes were. And the next one is um, Daniel and the destruction of Jerusalem. That's one of my favorite. I really want you to go deeply into Daniel. And I want you to think about him. And we're going to do more on Daniel, but I really want you to think about him and learn as much as you can about Daniel because there's so many life lessons from Daniel. So critical thinking teachers really concentrate on Daniel this week if you possibly can. All right.